Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the end of the weekend. Unfortunately, Monday coming upon us uh, rather quickly here tomorrow. It is June 15th, 2025, 1020 p.m. local time here in California. Latest activity shows a uh, looks like a 1.9... And also some movement up into uh, Alaska there. I believe that's where that 1.9 is striking up there. Uh, a little bit of activity stirring up off the coast of Oregon right now as well. Things starting to light up out here along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, got a 3.5 and a more recent 2.8 earthquake here. Again at the fracture boundary. Uh, this activity here. Out in the oceanic crust, normally further strains region downstream here. Pretty much follow this line of activity here towards the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Got to watch that. Right now it's pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there, but we are seeing some uh, amplification of pressure out here across the Pacific Northwest with this most recent activity. Also some movement stirring up here around Mount St. Helens in the last hour as well. 2.0. And a 1.3, uh, let's see if I got them on my list. I don't have them on my seismograph station list there, but uh, we can run over and double check the uh, seismograph station there. By the way, trimmer activity, 24 epicenters of trimmer uh, across the northern end and down here across the southern end of the Cascadia. More than likely, this should be amplified tomorrow uh, with the current movement that's happening out here across the Blanco Fracture Zone. We should see an increasing trimmer count um, on tomorrow's update. But uh, looking at the trimmer map here, or uh, the um, seismograph station, we'll go over here to the Mount St. Helens map. There's uh, a couple of those earthquakes on the west side here, up around the caldera. Got uh, about 4.9 kilometers. That's three miles deep underneath this area for a two-pointer. A um, little bit deeper for that 1.3, but uh, some movement stirring up out there. Nothing big. Let's check out the seismograph station here and see what we have. Now these are... That's going to be the correct time right here. So I'm guessing that's going to be one earthquake here and the other... Well, this is definitely the larger one, more localized. That's going to be the one point. Uh, Two-pointer, excuse me, from earlier this afternoon. That would make sense there with the time frame. So the most recent one that we're seeing, 1.3 here, probably going to be this one right, uh, probably right about here, that red mark on the uh, graph. A couple of smaller earthquakes out there. If we look back at the last 24 hours, 36 hours or so, there's been a, a handful of smaller ones. Nothing big going on there across Mount St. Helens for now, but... Uh, Keep an eye on the volcanoes. A lot of trimmer activity down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. And got to remember, uh, when you push that plate further down and down into the melted areas, well, that could stir up the volcanoes out here. Uh, right now, nothing of any interest. All the volcanoes are at the green status there, so nothing of any uh, <coughs> unusual activity. <coughs> the Macama Fault here in Northern California, pretty active all the way down towards the northern end of the Hayward Fault. Interesting line of activity here today. Nothing big, but uh, definitely showing up. There is some speculation here that the Hayward Fault is connected to the uh, Rogers Creek Fault, uh, which runs north here of the East Bay. wonder if somehow maybe that's connected up towards the Makama Fault. Maybe one and the same. That would be a little interesting there if that whole section went. Uh, either way, a uh, swarm of activity there across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Nothing big going on there. That's just hydrothermal plants in full swing. Uh, there's some movement there across the Bay Area. 2.8. That's from just after midnight last night. Uh, the latest one uh, further up north off the Rogers Creek Fault here. 1.5. There's that little one on the Hayward Fault from yesterday. Late last night, I should say. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet down here. Really nothing going on there across the creeping section or the Parkfield segment. There across Southern California, one earthquake above the 2.5 level. Uh, Fort Irwin area, that's way over here in this little boundary. It's kind of got the um, left pointing arrow. Don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity out here in this zone, but uh, now we got a 3.2. Uh, typical moving up here in the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. It's been swarming out there for a number of months. Uh, but let's see what we got here. 
It's roughly four miles underneath this area. Not 100% certain which fault system this occurred on. Um, not even close to any of these marked ones. So, a little interesting activity out there earlier this afternoon. Uh, for the rest of Southern California, just some general small microquake activity out there. Really nothing of uh, any interest for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up. But uh, as always, we better double check, make sure, see if the graphs are accurate or not, which they are. Really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity. Out in Idaho, it's calmed down quite a bit as far as that earthquake swarm around Stanley, Idaho. But it could come back at any time here, so... But for now, the earthquake swarm looks like it's ended. One earthquake over here around the western side of Yellowstone National Park, around the Hebgen Lake area, a 1.9. Again, that was from way earlier this morning, about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, oil fields of Texas still getting hit. Nothing big going on there for now. Got some further activity across the Curl Cam Chatka Trench with one of the latest quakes there, 4.7. That follows... Uh, some earthquake activity it struck out here in the last couple days, including a six-pointer. Looks like they downgraded that. That was a 6.1. It looks like they even lowered it some more. Uh, but got to watch this area closely here. It's got some major potential as far as large earthquake activity goes. I'll show you guys here real quick the uh, the potential that uh, can occur out there on the Curl Camp Chat. And it's been a little while. There's segments of, the, of that subduction zone that I feel are... Uh, pretty well ripe for some uh, large earthquake activity. I'm not going to cover the Japan Trench where that uh, nine-pointer struck in 2011, but I do want to look up here at the subduction zone interface level of that uh, the Curl Cam Chatka Trench here and show you guys. Uh, way up north, our last seven-pointer um, back in 2004. Previous to that, a 7.5, been a few years here, about five years since that one. Uh, struck up here around the center portion, but there's some segments out here uh, if we pull this up uh, That are kind of lacking some larger activity or as uh, it's been quite a few years since we've seen larger movement Look at that 8.3 here. That's a super deep one 2013 uh, There's a nine-pointer 1952 um 21, 21 kilometers deep or so on that. Let's switch that back over to uh, miles. Um, 1936-1904. There's a lot of earthquake activity that's missing in this zone here along that subduction zone interface area, which is interesting. Roughly about the middle section northward here that uh, is really lacking recent large earthquake activity there's been some deeper ones but most of the time these really large earthquakes occur um, up a little bit further along the uh, subduction zone level uh, that one's a super deep one there underneath the sea of osk 8.3 back in 2013 uh, down south here on the southern end quite a few eights in there as well um, 2020 Seven pointer 2013. Seems like we have earthquakes there on that segment every few years or so of large magnitudes. Uh, so we've got to watch that closely there with all the activity that's been stirring up here recently with that recent six pointer and uh, a couple other earthquakes there today as well. Uh, 4.7, pretty shallow, and then a 3.8 towards Japan. So keep an eye on that. Got some, uh, some interesting quakes there recently and it can get much bigger than the six pointer is what i'm trying to point out here uh clustering going on across the indonesia area nothing big quite a few fours and threes um really nothing of any major interest there it's just normally a cluster on any given day uh, new zealand area some older quakes from this morning nothing new to report across this area throughout the afternoon and evening so far looks like we are getting some shifting going on across the northern area here of the Pacific Plate as noted across the Cascadia here and into the Mount St. Helens region and also here across the Crow Cam Chatka. So watch that closely. Um, Middle America Trench, quite a few threes and fours out there. Nothing big, just a little pancake of earthquake activity on that subduction zone. Uh, same for the Peru Chile Trench, South America area. 
bunch of clustering. Uh, there's a decent earthquake there, 5.6. They got it in the red because it's very close to this populated region and uh, fairly shallow as well. Notice the uh, pager reports there up in the orange or yellow for the pager. Did you fill it reports up around the orange? So that's uh, pretty close to a populated area. And of course, this is another major subduction zone that can produce big earthquakes. In fact, the largest ever recorded 9.5 earthquake, the Great Chilean Earthquake, 1960 or 1961. One of those dates. I keep getting the mix up. I think it's 1960. That was a big one. Uh, let's take a look here at the rest of the globe. Indian Ocean, pretty quiet out there. The Mediterranean region, twos and threes, nothing of any abnormal movement going on. Uh, same for the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, up into the Canada region, we'll double check that here real quick, see if we got anything going on across the northern end of the Cascadia. Uh, let's pull this up here, plate boundaries. One earthquake, it looks like in the last day or so, uh, in the BC region, a little 1.8. Nothing big going on. A um, couple different swarms here, it looks like, in the last couple weeks or so across the northern end of the Cascadia. Uh, for the rest of Canada, see what we got there for the entirety of the uh, country up here. A lot of uh, activity out west on that plate boundary. Not a whole lot inland. There's some quake activity around the uh, oil fields around Alberta and BC region. Those are recognized here by the Earthquakes Canada map as suspected industry related events. In other words, earthquakes out in the oil fields. Space weather activity ramping up here. The sun is cooking, literally. Got quite a few prominence eruptions there off on the western limb. Some may be here facing Earth. Looks like a uh, if we were to turn that, it looks some something like that. So, gotta watch these prominence uh, features. They can blast off um, anytime, along with some sol solar flares. Uh, we did have that near X flare earlier this morning. Since then, a number of C flares and a more recent M flare coming back down from another M flare here. Uh, by the way, that sunspot right here, the culprit of that most recent M flare and the large M flare. Uh, did produce a CME, but I believe that had a northern uh, route to it. Shot most of the plasma north of the Earth Sun plane, so probably not going to see anything on that. We'll have to watch for details, though, from the Space Weather Prediction Center as uh, far as that goes. But it looks like 4114 wants to pop off an X flare. Uh, there's so many peppered spots here indicating major complexity going on and growth within that sunspot look at all that Let's see if we can zoom that up here real quick a little bit look at all those different colors and, and uh, chaos in there <laughs> we could easily see an x flare uh, here out of this region very soon uh, x flare activity has been increased i may even bump mine up just a little bit more uh, i can't remember exactly what i have it on uh, these guys are forecasting about a 30% chance for X flare, M flare at 75% chance. Proton event is elevated as well at 65% chance. So watch 4114. Again, it's it is sizzling. I'm just coming down from an M flare, and it's uh, it's almost directly facing the Earth right now. So anything, um, pinning it's a full halo CME. I think that was just a partial CME there on that last eruption that went to the north of the Earth-Sun plane. If it's a full halo C, uh, CME, obviously that would be earth directed um, because it's shooting off there at uh, pretty much uh, in all directions. Massive coronal ho hole here, number 57, but this has got a way southward pointing tilt to it. Really not expecting much from this. It's a massive area shooting out some high speed solar wind stream, but notice really ain't doing much here on the auroras. Nothing really major in the forecast here. Just Missing it. It's well south, again, of the Earth Sun plane. Uh, 4114. Got to watch that one closely there. Um, all right. See what else we got there. There's our most recent flares, uh, which is a M8.4 from 4114. Let me see if they've updated their um, space weather map here, real quick. 
Here's Earth in the green, the sun in the yellow. There, that's one CME that shot off from the um, the western limb, directed away from Earth. Yeah, I don't see anything that tells me that uh, they've updated this yet. So, yeah, we'll wait for them, see if they uh, do a little updating on their end. A noisy night out there across Montana and the Dakotas, down into Nebraska and Colorado again. Got a little 2% chance for some tornado, big-time wind, and some hail threats out there today or for the remainder of the evening. Uh, tomorrow for the Monday time period, severe weather lingering out here across the northern plains with an enhanced risk, including a 5% chance here for some tornado activity, mainly around Minnesota. 2% stretching out here towards Wyoming. Uh, a little bit of wind and some big time hail threats out there as well. Quick glance at the weather model map here. See what's cooking up across this area. Uh, lots of lightning. Around Bowman, outside of Buffalo, lots and lots of lightning. I can only imagine a Sunday night like this, having to get up for work early tomorrow morning. No sleep, consistent lightning. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, that is pretty crazy. Uh, aside from that, um, not a whole lot else going on here. I guess we better check the uh, hurricane status out here, see if we got anything uh, to worry about down across the uh, Gulf. I don't really see anything. Got ma massive high pressure out in the Atlantic, keeping everything stirred away, keep keeping it blocked, I should say. Um... Yeah, I don't see anything there on the horizon that tells me that uh, we're looking at any hurricane activity. We do have some cooler weather coming out here for the West Coast after a couple days of hot weather. Uh, low pressure moving in here. Bringing in uh, quite a bit of cooler weather. I don't know if we're going to get any rain out of that. Maybe in the Pacific Northwest. Not so much here in Northern California. But I'll take the below average temperatures out here. I'll take that for sure. Uh, and then after that, uh, well, looks a little neutral out there. Yeah, well, there's a little bit dipping down in Northern California, but most of the rain from that low pressure going to be up north around Oregon, coast of Oregon. I think that's a spot to be. Beautiful country up there. Uh, unfortunately, there's danger that lurk, lurks offshore, the Cascadia subduction zone, right? Anywhere you go out here, there's natural disasters and hazards. But yeah, quite a bit of rain out there across the uh, country, except for the desert southwest. I guess that includes California. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Seismograph stations out there are quiet for now. But uh, again, keep an eye here on the west coast. We're starting to move a little bit. Yeah, the fracture boundary zones out here. I don't think we've had a lot out here recently. A little bit back over here across the western portion of that uh, Blanco fracture zone. But this is a little bit more closer here. And again, it's on a fracture boundary. Um, spreading seafloor centers down here. That should strain this area. I'm thinking areas down into the subduction zone as well across the southern area of the Cascadia could see an uptick but uh, anyway folks have yourself a wonderful evening rest of enjoy the rest of your Sunday night we'll see you guys back out here for the Monday morning update take care and uh, please stay safe out there crazy world right now have a good one